Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and today I'm making a baby quilt, start to finish. This video will be just a little bit longer than some of my other videos. Making a quilt takes a little bit of time. So I started with some five inch squares and first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna make half square triangles that will eventually turn into some hourglass blocks. These five inch squares, after getting them Put together into that hourglass block will measure four inches before I put the quilt all together and I'm making 64 blocks so I needed 64 squares 32 that are the background fabric and then 32 of the pretty blues greens and a little bit of gold so after sewing a line on both sides of my pencil line I cut them all along that pencil line and I now have my half square triangles. After pressing them all, I'm going to put them together. And then I thought I'd show you my oops moment here where I accidentally put two prints next to my background, a double layer, which I don't want. So I'm gonna take out that seam and I will take one of those triangles off. I'll try to keep those two together and I'll have to go back and sew that together but then I'll take my two extra triangles and make another set of half square triangles. Sometimes you make a mistake, <laughs> you rip it out, you move on. So I'll take another square and I will just put those triangles down on my square and sew them together. So after getting that little mistake fixed, I went back and I mixed up all my half square triangles and I want different fabrics for each half, for each hourglass block. I don't want to have the same fabric together. So I had to kind of mix everything up and put right sides together, the print facing the background fabric. I drew a line down the middle again, a pencil line and also on either side of that pencil line to get my hourglass blocks constructed. And after I'm done with this, I'll cut down that pencil line, I'll open them up, I'll press, and then I'll trim all of the blocks to four inches.
After getting all of my hourglass blocks trimmed to four inches, I put them up on my design wall and tried to figure out how I would arrange them. And this is the arrangement I came up with. Very traditional. The hourglass blocks are positioned. Some are standing up and some are on their sides. And then I just sewed them together in rows. This little quilt is eight by eight, eight blocks by eight blocks. And after I get them all together, I will be adding a border. My border here is five inches wide and I just measured the border to fit the quilt top. I'll add a border to each side and then it'll be time to quilt. Here's my batting. I'm using an 80-20 batting and I'm using a spray basting method. It's, the spray is called 505 and I spray the batting lightly and then I press the quilt, kind of smooth it out starting in the middle, spreading out and if there's any mistakes I can just pull it off the batting and try again. This is a smaller quilt, so it's not too difficult. And I found this really cute backing fabric in my stash that someone had given me, and I think it just is a perfect back for this little quilt. So I'll also spray the back of the batting there and <clears throat> smooth out the backing fabric on top. It'll be all ready to go. I'm going to quilt this in diagonal lines and I started out by marking with a bamboo skewer and a ruler. I often will do that to just mark the line with a crease. But after doing a couple rows like that, I decided to use a <clears throat> marker. It's a clover chalk marker. And you'll see um, right here is my little marker. It washes out. I'm using a ruler. I'm lining it up with my seam, that diagonal <clears throat> line, 
and then I will sew through the seam. It's called stitch in the ditch and I'm trying to aim for right in the middle of those two seams. And when I got to the end, I did not mark. I was able to eyeball that last little bit. Some, for some reason, I can eyeball the end, but I can't eyeball the beginning of the long seam. So that's what I do. After going diagonally through all one direction, I turned my quilt and I made diagonal lines going the opposite direction. Now it's time to trim and I'll just follow the edge of my quilt and trim the backing and batting away from the, using just the edge of the quilt as my guide. Here's my binding fabric. I'm cutting strips that are two and a half inches wide, enough to go around my quilt. And after cutting my strips, I will attach them together at my machine. Taking the two ends, I kind of put them together just like this, and then I will sew a diagonal line from one corner to the other corner make sure I've got it straight across and then trim that little excess behind away. And I'll do that again. And then I will be pressing my long strip of binding in half. After getting binding ready, I am going to be attaching it to the back of the quilt, leaving about a 8 to 10 inch tail, maybe 10 to 12 inch, and I'll go all the way around the quilt. And when I get to the corner, I will stop about a quarter inch away from the end. I'll pivot, sew off the corner, and I'll fold up and down and make a nice fold right there at the corner of the quilt starting at the top again I'm gonna do that all the way around and when I get to the other side I'm gonna also leave a tail here are my two leftover tails and I'll fold one over and I need to have at least two and a half inches long there. And then I'll trim right next to the fold. Make sure that they are right next to each other. And then for measurement, I take my leftover piece here. I set it right on that fold 
and I trim using that little piece as my guide. So that little extra piece there should be two and a half inches. Then I'm gonna open this up and put right sides together at an angle just like I did with the long pieces of binding and pin. And then I need to kind of bunch my quilt up to get that seam in. So I'm gonna try to put it under my sewing machine and sew a diagonal line. And it is just a little bit fiddly to do this. You can also draw a line with a pencil across so you have something to follow. I will not be doing that today, but I'm gonna go corner to corner, just like I did before. Try to get the quilt out of the way. And then I'll double check that it fits correctly before I trim away the triangles on the back. And it fits so I'm going to trim the triangles from the back of that binding I will pin it down and finish sewing that binding down to the back of the quilt after doing that I'll roll the binding to the front I'm going to choose a thread color that matches my binding and I'll be sewing the binding onto the front of the quilt Thank you for joining me today. I always enjoy sewing with you. It's fun to make quilts and it's fun to make quilts with friends. So I'll see you next time.